Hello, today we are going to talk about solving equations. There's basically three steps that um, we're going to follow in order to solve an equation. The first step would be to simplify, I'm sorry, simplify each expression. We learned earlier that equations have two expressions that are equal to each other. So you may have to simplify one or both of those expressions first. Second, you will do addition or subtraction and you're going to do the inverse of whatever operation is shown. So remember, inverse just simply means the opposite. So if they are showing subtraction, you will do addition. If they're showing addition, you will do the inverse or the opposite, which is subtraction. Step three is to multiply or divide. And again, it is going to be the inverse of whatever operation is being shown in the equation. So let's do a couple of examples together, well, actually a few examples together, um, just so you can see a few being worked out. Example number one is written here, and step one says to simplify each expression. So we have an expression on the left-hand side of the equal sign and an expression on the right-hand side of the equal sign as well. So I'm gonna focus on the left-hand side of the equal sign. We have 1a plus 8a minus 3a. Well, if we remember from unit six, 1a plus 8a would give me 9a. 9a minus 3a would give me a total of 6a. So I have combined my like terms in order to get 6a on the left-hand side of the equal sign. Now on the right-hand side of the equal sign, we have two plus 80 divided by two. Well, if we think back to unit one, order of operations is gonna ask me to divide first. So that will be 80 divided by two, which is 40. And to that 40, we will add a two, bringing the total to 42. So seven times A equals 42. Now, step two says to do either addition or subtraction, the inverse of whichever one is being shown. But what we have here is neither being shown. So since we don't have addition or subtraction, we're going to skip step two and move straight to step three. Multiply or divide, and again, you're going to do the inverse of whatever operation is being shown. Since multiplication is being shown, then I'm going to then divide both sides by six. They multiply the A by six, so I am going to divide the A um, by six. By doing that, those two sixes cancel out, leaving me with one. And we learned earlier that one A is the same thing as A. 42 divided by six is seven. So the solution for this equation would be seven. Let's look at another example. Sometimes they'll give you equations with a fraction you're still going to follow the three steps, but you also need to remember your rules for computation of fractions. Step one is to simplify each expression. Well, both expressions on the um, both sides of the equal sign have already been simplified, so that's done. Step two is to add or subtract. Um, again, we do not have addition or, um, or subtraction, so we will not do either. Then the last step is to multiply or divide depending on what's being shown. So in this equation, we have multiplication. We have 8 ninths times x. And the inverse of multiplication would be division. So I'm going to divide this side by 8 ninths. And I'm also going to divide this side of the equation by 8 ninths. So those two cancel out leaving me with x, which is what you wanted to do. You wanted to isolate the variable. That's the whole goal of solving equations, is to isolate the variable. So we have the x alone. Now we just need to focus on 7 eighteenths divided by 8 ninths. If we think back to dividing fractions, we're going to copy the first fraction, change division to multiplication, and then take the reciprocal of the second fraction, and we could go straight into uh, multiplying, but I'm gonna cross cancel first just to keep my numbers a little smaller. Nine can go into nine once, and nine goes into 18 twice. So now that I've cross canceled, I can go ahead and multiply my numerators. I will then multiply the denominators. 
The fraction is simplified since I cross canceled earlier. Therefore, the solution for x is 7 over 16. Now, one more example. Sometimes you'll be given decimals, and that's quite all right. The steps still remain the same. Step one, to simplify each expression. Both of the expressions have already been simplified. We can't combine 5.11 and x. They're not like terms. There's only one term here, so you can't get any more simplified than that. Uh, step two would be to do addition or subtraction. Remember, you're going to do the inverse of whatever is being shown. In this particular equation, the, in, um, the operation being shown sorry, is addition. So the inverse of that would be subtraction. So instead of adding 5.11, we are going to minus or subtract 5.11 from both sides of the um, equation. Remember, by subtracting on both sides, we are isolating the variable, and that was the whole goal. Now what we have is 10.4, and we are subtracting 5.11. So um, I'm just going to think back to computation with decimals. Add my zero, borrow, and I have nine, two, that's going to be five. Bring your decimal point straight down. And what you have is x equals 5.29 is your solution.